Hello everyone and welcome to C++ Tutorials. In this tutorial we explain how to properly separate class definitions into the header file and into the implementation files. And we also explain how to properly compile the files and how to run a project. Here is a brief summary of what you will learn in this video tutorial. First of all, we will define a header file of a function called student. This function will store the student name and student age and it will have several methods or public member functions. They are the constructor, a function that will set name and age, and a function that will print name and age. Then over here, we will define an implementation file of this class and we will implement these functions. And finally, we will create a driver or an application file of this class and we will demonstrate how to use this class and how to compile everything. We will have to change the default properties of the Visual Studio code in order to be able to compile this project and I will explain you how to do that very thoroughly. But before I start with explanations I need to mention the following. If you're an engineer or a student and you want to improve your programming or robotic skills, we can help you with that. We provide professional skill development services and tutoring. Also, if you need help with your C++ robotics or embedded systems projects, we can help you with that. We have more than 15 years of teaching and research experience at the top universities in the US and Europe. Furthermore, we have significant industry experience. Our contact information is provided in the description below this video. Ok, let's start. This video tutorial is based on Visual Studio Code for editing C++ files. However, you can also use some other C++ editor as long as you know how to compile files and projects in that editor. I will start this project from scratch. I will open command prompt and I will navigate to my folder where I store my C++ files. Here it is. It's an empty folder. Then I will start Visual Studio Code in this folder by typing code and dot. And here it is. The first step is to define and implement our class. We will separate the class into the header file and into the implementation file. The header file is also called the interface file. So let's start with the header file. Click on File, New File, and let's call the file student.h. It's a standard practice to put the extension of the header files as h. However, some C++ programmers like hpp as an extension. In this tutorial, I will use h. Here it is. Let's save it in this folder and let's start. Before you even write a header file, it's very important to include the guards that will prevent the compiler from including this header file multiple times into your application file. That's why we need to include the so-called guards. These guards start like this. If and def, this stands for if not defined and then usually the standard practice is to write the capitalized name of your class and then to write this. This means if not defined student age we will define. We will simply type this and then student age and over here we need to end these guards by typing and if. Okay, so again, these are the preprocessor guards that prevent the compiler and preprocessor to include multiple definitions of our student class into your project. Good. The next step is to include the standard header files. First of all, we'll need input output stream. Then over here we will need also CST 
dlib, and we need to include string. Okay, then the next step is to type using namespace std, and that's it. Let's save and let's continue. Okay, so let's write our class. First of all, we will do this, class student, and over here, let's write the class. First of all, let's start with public things. We will have the constructor. I will call this constructor student, and this is standard practice, or actually this is the requirement. The name of the constructor should be the name of the class. And over here, let's immediately include or write our private member variables. We will have two of them. First one will store the student name. I will call it like this, and it is of a type string. And then we will have another one that will store the student age. Okay, let's continue. So this constructor over here will set these two private member variables to their default values. So let's put it like this. This one will do this, no name, and age will be zero. It's always a good idea to write a comment and to explain what your functions are actually doing. Okay. The next function is the function that will set the student name and student age once a particular object of our class is defined, or better to say, created. Consequently, we will need this function set name age, and let's do this string name and int age. Okay. Then we need to write a comment. This function will do this. It will set student name to name and it will set student age to age. And then finally, we need another function that will print student name and age. And here it is. It's going to be void print name H. And here it is. Good. Now, this is our class header file. This file is also called the interface file. In this interface file, you will not implement the functions. That is, you will just leave the prototypes. And it's very important to state the comments. And then the user of your class will actually not look into the implementation file. It will only look into this file. And by just looking at this file and by reading the comments, some other user of your, your class will be able to figure out what your class is actually doing. Okay, let's save this file and let's start with the implementation of our implementation file. So let's click File, New File, and here... A standard practice is, call, is to call the implementation file as your header file. That is the name of the header file and the implementation file should be the same. Only the difference should be in the extension. The extension of your implementation file should be CPP. So let's create this file and let's save this file. Here it is. Okay, the first step is to include the standard header files. Then, after these header files, we need to include our class header file. We do it like this. And now, notice a big difference. Over here, we will use quotations to include our header file. Here it is. So, what's the difference between these includes and this include? Well, over here, we are using these angle brackets. These angle brackets tell to the compiler and to the C++ linker that we are actually including these header files that are part of the standard C++ library, right? And angle brackets mean that these input output stream, CST, dlib, and string files are actually located in the standard folder 
for C++ libraries. However, for user-defined header files, we use quotations. And this is a big difference. So whenever you define your own class, that is its own header file, you will need to use quotations to include it. Okay, this is very important. And then after this, we need to type using namespace std. And let's start with implementation. How do we implement a class? First of all, we need to write the name of the class. And then we do this by writing these two characters. We are saying that the function student is a member of our student class. And over here, what we need to do, we need to simply set the student name and student age to default value. So I will do this to save time. And I will erase this. And I will write no name over here. And I will set the age to zero. OK, so this is our constructor. Next, let's start with the implementation of this file, or actually of this function. A good practice is simply to copy and paste the prototype, and then to do this. You just need to write this. That is, you need to say that set name age is the member of the student class, and you do that after the return type, and over here, we need to write this. Student name should be name. And student age should be age. OK, so let's continue. The next step is to implement print name age. So copy this prototype over here, erase the semicolon, and write this, this will state that print name age is actually a member of the student class. And let's simply write this. CO out for printing, student name is. And over here, we will simply print the student name. And we will end the line. And we will do the same thing for the age, C out, student age age is over here and then we will simply print the student age and and the line okay that's it simple as that this is our implementation file so let's save this file the next step is to write our driver or the application file to do that click on file new file and i will call the file driver file and over here, the extension should be .cpp. And I'll create the file. Here it is. Let's start with the standard includes. And over here, you need to include the header file of your class. Since you want to use the class in this file, you need to type student.h. And this is very important. Now, here is one very important comment. It's not necessary over here to include student.cpp. What's the reason for that? Well, when compiling this project, we will actually compile the implementation file, and then we will compile the driver file, and then we will link them together and create the executable file. Consequently, over here, it's only necessary to include student.h. Next, don't forget to write using namespace std, and let's continue. Let's define our int main function, and let's over here return 0. That's it. Then, let's create student object. I will call it student1. Let's do this, student1 dot set set name age let's set the name to john smith a generic name and let's set the age to 21. then let's verify that we were able to set name and age by printing name and age and that's it here is our driver file simple as that okay the next step is to compile this file now here is a naive approach 
to compile this file that will most likely fail. If you're in VS Code, you can click over here and you can click Run C, C++ file and over here you need to select your compiler. In this video tutorial, I will be using the G++ compiler, which is basically a standard compiler and more importantly an open source and free compiler based on GNU GCC compiler. So I will select it over here. And over here you can see that there is an error. Okay, so let's click on show errors. And over here, if you look at the terminal, there are a bunch of errors. So what are the errors over here? It's very important to read these errors. So first of all, we got a few interesting messages saying that we have undefined reference to student set name age. Uh-huh. Then you have another thing over here. Let me close this. Oops, let me run it again so I can see it, see the errors. Okay. And you can see that it's also undefined reference to student one. Well, this means that our compiler is not able to recognize this class student, and that's the issue. That is, something went wrong. So what went wrong? It turns out that the default settings of Visual Studio Code do not compile the implementation file. They only try to uh, compile this file, that is the driver file, while the implementation file is not compiled. And you can see that by inspecting the default properties that are set by VS Code. If you click on this folder, and if you click on tasks.json, you will find this very important information. What is written over here? Well, first of all, you can see over here that we are calling this compiler g++.executable, so that's fine. This is a standard parameter, and this creates an issue. Over here, when we call the compiler from this file, we are only compiling this file, and we are not compiling the implementation file, and consequently, the linker is not able to link all the files. So to fix this problem, you need to change this parameter over here, and let's learn how to do that. Over here, instead of an individual file, we need to tell to our compiler that the compiler needs to compile all, all C++ files. And we do it like this, that is by first adding this macro, which denotes the path of our folder. Then you need to write this and then start.cpp. And this command we tell the compiler to compile all C++ files in this folder, that is in our work folder, and leave the other things as they are. Just as a side comment, over here you can change the name of the executable file. The compiler over here will create an executable file whose name is driverfile.executable, and that's precisely what's written over here. So file base name no extension means driver file. However, you can explicitly state the name of the executable file over here. So save this, go back to the driver file, then click here and run C, C++ file, and let's see, everything should be fine. And now, if you click here on terminal, you will see that the file is being executed. To execute this file, in a simple way, you click over here, you open command prompt, and let's see the content of the folder. Here it is. And we have driver file.executable, so simply write driver file, and that's it. Without extension, and you are able to execute the file. Okay, that's all for today.